Why is it less effective if there is 10? What? Why is it less effective? So as, as I said earlier, those are, let me show you here. So first, the wall opposition can be a problem, okay, because you cannot have a pipeline completely uh, uh, adhering the wall. There's, there's the stent already, the old stent that's already there. Right. Uh, uh, that's mainly a reason. Uh, it could be that the endothelialization is not uh, good enough, as I said, uh, but that's, you know, that's mainly... But uh, thinking rationally, the stent is already there, and you're putting a flow diverter into it, which actually reduces, which increases the flow diversion, and being the metal there, endothelial, endothelialization uh, occurs naturally. So uh, a flow diverter being placed on a stented vessel how can it be rationally less effective? Well, theoretically, flow diversion is made to be placed uh, at, uh, opposed to an endothelium. Okay, here you're not opposing it to an endothelium, you're opposing it to a foreign body. So you're not going to be as tight and as covering as you want, you know? It'll be just like a double stent, like the thread. What? It'll be just like a double stent. Well, it's, it, it can, it, yeah, I mean, the thread device, the issue with the thread device is that you two stands put them together. It'll be similar to some that. issues sometimes with that and sometimes trapping of air. But anyway, here, and this is not only our results, in puffs, in the puff trial, the aneurysms that didn't respond were aneurysms that were, it was one or two that were stented before. So I think uh, mainly it's one opposition, but it could be some other, uh, other uh, reason that we don't know, as I said, endothelialization or something. No, here, he, he, here the major problem, so it's for you. The major problem here is the fact that the previous stents which were placed, they were laser cut stents. Huh? And the laser cut stents, you can see only the markers on the distal tip, but you don't know at all if it's opposed over the wall of the artery. If the first stent is not opposed and you put inside a flow diverter, it will not be at all. And even if you put balloon and whatever, you cannot oppose it uh, because the stent was put in several years ago or several months ago or whatever. It's endothelialized, so you cannot act on it. So if the first stent is not opposed, the second one will, will not be if you put it inside. And you, if you don't have any opposition, it will not work. So the question is, so when you put the stent inside, the, um, did, did you find any difference in the complication? Uh, because you are reporting 20%, 20 yes, right? Yes, there's a high complication. So, so did you have any uh, difference in the complication when the, st the previous stent was an enterprise or the previous stent was a neuroform? It's a very, uh, very yes, important... Yes, uh, I didn't mention it here, more with the neuroform. Why more than with the neuroform? Because it's an open cell stent. Huh? Yes. So, uh, so usually, you know, so I saw some cases with the, with the stent in the siphon. And so when it's enterprise, enterprise, it's a closed cell stent. Offshore, we know that offshore, when you are uh, over a S inside, it will never open completely. When you put a flow diverter inside, it will never open. So if the st previously put laser cut stent is well opposed to the wall, then if you put a flow diverter, it doesn't make any difference. It okay. actually increases, but if there is a defect, in the previously placed stent, it was not opposed well. Only then there is a problem. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you.
So I'm, I'm going to move to uh, uh, some cases uh, that went wrong. Uh, I have a lot of those cases, so, uh, but I have 10 minutes, I guess, uh, to show you that. I'm going to start with a case of uh, surpass. Uh, we were part of the SAMP trial, uh, which is the trial in the US uh, that hopefully will lead to the approval of the surpass uh, flow diverter. This is a patient with a carotid ophthalmic aneurysm uh, that uh, uh, we treated it with uh, uh, surpass. The patient had a contralateral aneurysm that was clipped. Then we did a balloon angioplasty. As you see here, uh, the surface didn't open very well, so we did a balloon angioplasty. And uh, you know those cases, AJ Wakalu used to go and proctor all those cases. And he's even, I mean, I had cases where the surface looked great, but he wanted me to balloon it. So he's a big proponent of balloon angioplastying those uh, surface cases. So uh, this is uh, just a run showing uh, a delayed run showing the stasis of contrast in the aneurysm. Uh, the patient uh, did well, then four hours later they call me that she's hemiplegic. So we, we uh, get a CAT scan, the CAT scan looks fine, so I take her for an angiogram, and uh, this, this is something I've never seen before. Uh, as soon as I went up, with a catheter. I didn't put any microcatheter or anything. I did my run, and here it is. This is what we see. So this aneurysm ruptured right in front of my eyes when I did my run. Uh, you know, later on, we, 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 were, we started thinking, as you see, you see thrombus here. Most likely what happened is the surpass thrombosed distally, and what happened is this the whole flow was going into a blind pouch, which is the aneurysm, because that was most likely thrombosis distally in the surpass, and uh, uh, there was some ball valve effect and the aneurysm ruptured. So the patient didn't survive. I had to deconstruct the vessel and, uh, and she didn't survive. So this is an unfortunate case. Uh, let's move to the next case. Uh, this is a patient of uh, 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 my partner who uh, decided to treat this dysplastic MCA aneurysm uh, with pipelines. So uh, he went there and uh, placed those pipelines and uh, placed three actually. He, he started uh, lining them up and uh, placed three pipelines. Uh, I think because he got short on the first one, then he wanted to cover all three. Uh, at the end of the case, what happened when he deployed the last one, the last one flipped and went in the A1. So you have now a T pipeline. You see the flow diversion here. As you see here on this, you have it all the way and then thrombus forming in the A1 and M1. At this point, uh, he went up with a balloon uh, all the way to the A1 and inflated a balloon and tried to pull and then he was able to pull back the pipeline in the M1 and uh, uh, did some uh, IA Leopro and uh, took care of the thrombus but the patient ended up having a left uh, frontal hemorrhage. Uh, I think in this case, uh, uh, you know, I think one pipeline should have been enough, but calculating where you're going to stop it. Uh, sometimes it's different, but with the new pipeline flex, you can resheat the pipeline and then uh, readjust it in the old classical pipeline. You will do your estimation and sometimes you deploy it and, and it goes here and that's nothing you, you can do. Uh, another case, another unfortunate case, this is a patient with this dysplastic aneurysm. Uh, we decided to uh, treat it with the uh, pipeline. Uh, we had the phenom catheter all the way there. And then uh, there was a lot of friction pushing the device. And then while we were pushing the device, suddenly 
it ruptured the phenom microcatheter, and this led to a recall to all phenom catheter in the US after this uh, happened, and they had to do a recall and then stop using phenom for a while and then uh, re-examine re their batch. And what happened is a big uh, extract at the point of rupture of the phenom, and then we had to, uh, you know, place onyx and the patient uh, uh, had, was right hemiparetic and uh, aphasic. Has anyone had a phenom rupture with pipeline? Yeah. Another case of a patient with a subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, she had this aneurysm. Uh, we avoid putting acutely any stents or pipeline and ruptured aneurysm. We coiled it, kept the neck, and what I do usually, and we published our series, I do it in a delayed fashion. So I would do the coiling, and then before the patient is discharged or, or, or we bring her back, we would place a, a, a pipeline uh, to finish the job. So we did that, we, she did well, we placed the pipeline. Then I go up to see the patient in the ICU and then the patient is striderous and she's, she's uh, desatting and she has a big neck hematoma all the way like that. So what happened is my fellow did an exchange when I wasn't in the room and most likely he perforated one of the external branches and uh, he and he had to come, they had to do, they and nearly did a tracheostomy bedside on her because of the hematoma and they had to uh, intubate her, they were able to do it uh, endoscopically. That's the big hematoma here and this is, you see the trachea is deviated. I did an angiogram and uh, I couldn't see any active extra, but uh, you know, you can see maybe some spasm here, but there was no active uh, extravasation. The patient was intubated for uh, two to three weeks until the hematoma resolved, and then uh, she did well, but uh, this was a really terrible, uh, terrible case. Any more time, maybe for one case? This is a patient with a carotid ophthalmic aneurysm. Uh, the patient also had a cavernous aneurysm. And uh, while we were navigating uh, to go up, we created a TC fistula. Uh, as you see here, the TC fistula. So we had to treat it with coils, and then we placed the pipeline. We brought the patient back, placed the pipeline, and the follow-up. That's the aneurysm is gone at three months. Uh, another case of uh, jailing the M1. Uh, this is uh, a case, the patient had this uh, uh, A1 aneurysm. Uh, she had a patent uh, ACOM. Uh, the options here, I mean, you could just place a pipeline here, and I think it could have taken care of that. Uh, or we decided to place a pipeline and end it here. Uh, during the procedure, we couldn't end it here. We should have resheated it. Uh, we didn't. Uh, it was deployed, you know, by my fellow, but it's ultimately my responsibility. And the uh, patient came back three weeks later with a thrombus beyond the pipeline. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot do any mechanical thrombectomy. We don't have access to that. All we could do is inject some uh, IATPA and IA Reopro that we did. The patient did well clinically, but this is a CT perfusion. He has a territory at risk. And uh, uh, he came back another time with some symptoms. Uh, he does not have a stroke, but he is flow dependent. So we had to admit him, give him IV fluids, bring, him, bring up his pressure. And if he's gonna keep on coming symptomatic at that time, I'm gonna have to do a bypass on him. I don't have any other option uh, for that. So, uh, as you see, uh, it's, we have practically, we have a license to kill. E each one of you, each one of us, when we graduate, this is what my, my mentor used to say when that he graduated residency, he's like, I'm giving you a license to kill, because this is really, uh, if we're not careful. To the Internal Revenue, Customs, and half the FBI. It's not impossible. Nothing's impossible. It would be like trying to kill the president. There's no way we can get to him. Tom, you know you surprised me. If anything in this life is certain, if history's taught us anything, it says you can kill anyone.
Hello, can you hear us? Yeah, great. Yeah, here is. Hello from Barcelona. <laughs> I'm Dr. Macho, eh, Dr. Blasco, and Dr. Werner. Eh, we will work for you here with a, I hope, nice uh, surpass case. Uh, now we are going to show you a little bit the 3D. Uh, Jordi will, right. will start to explain you a little bit about the case. Okay, so uh, as you will see right now in the 3D, we've got a young lady with uh, several aneurysms. Uh, the biggest one is at the level of the intracavernous segment. Uh, we will turn right now the 3D so you can see the different uh, aneurysms down there, which is not completely filled with contrast. And then we've got another dilatation right here. And the last one, which is the, the upper one. The idea is to be able to cover all this uh, segment with uh, only one flow diverter with one surpass. So right now we're going to take some measures in order to uh, decide the, the length of the stand we're going we're gonna to deploy. Here you can see um, uh, both views in lateral and AP view and we're going to choose as well the working projection. So can you tell us the size of the device and I mean, what is the length you're planning yeah, to use? Yeah, yeah. 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 we're we're gonna we're gonna decide right now, but it's uh, it's previewed to be something around a 430 or a 440 uh, surpass the streamline. And uh, right now, we're gonna take some measures in order to uh, to take the final decision, because the point is that we we want to cover from the level of the anterior choroidal artery down there. Here, you can see the. Um, the level of the of the neck of the aneurysm in the more proximal part and uh, we don't want to finish right there with the flow diverter so we we're going to go uh, more proximal in order not to have problems and to achieve a complete uh, covering of the of the whole uh, segment of the artery here you can see the the three different aneurysms that we've got in this case so the first thing is that we're going to go up there Right now we've got an infinity at the level of the uh, internal carotid artery and we're going to go up with, um, with a uh, cat5 and with an offset in order to help us to get uh, up there. We're going to place the, um, the cat5 at the level of the MCA and once we're there we will be uh, able to go up with, uh, with a flow diverter with a surpass. So here you can see that we're taking uh, some measures. The final length uh, should be something around uh, four centimeters, and um, maybe Dr. Macho is going to be able to explain to you that the behavior of this uh, of the surpass is a bit different from other uh, flow diverters, so it will yeah. not shorten too much. And, uh, so the final decision is going to be something around uh, 440 that I told you previously. So uh, Juan, please, could yeah. you? Explain when them a little with, bit more. Uh, with surpass, we, we like it in very long uh, needs. When we need to work uh, in, in a very long distance, the, this is the one that uh, offers in our hands the, the better prediction of length. Because uh, the, the particular architecture is more rigid than the other ones, but in other hands, it stays much more stable in length. You will see that how EC finally is open, is to open in the curves, surpass. Uh, is difficult in the beginning and the landing zone, but uh, for the rest is much more easy than the other ones, you will see. Uh, the question is there we need to work in a three axis system all the times, and the stand itself, uh, you will see afterwards, is a three axis system itself. So because what is the long sheet you're external. using? So now we're going to go up. With yeah, the we've got infinity, as I told you, right. it's I think an 80 centimeter infinity. Uh, uh, through an uh, eight French uh, introducer, and then now we're gonna go. Or maybe we can show you right here. We've got ready the cat five, and we've got the offset inside. Cat five, offset inside, and the wire. And a yeah, and a synchro wire. Okay, so, so we're yeah, gonna go up with this. So now we 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 change the configuration to. So you're gonna be able right now to see uh, in the screen. Our working projection and uh, and the last run that we performed. So maybe we can we can make it move the run. Les podemos enseñar la serie. Vas tirando. So. And we so this is the last run with the working projection.
in order to be able to pass through all these uh, aneurysms without uh, damaging them. So now we use a, a roadmap. We don't like in that particular case as we get mm -hmm. a lot of superimposition coming from the aneurysm. We'll use a roadmap with a very uh, diluted uh, contrast. Yeah, we try. Can I get the roadmap? Okay, so this is going to be the working projection. Now we go up. Access with the with the offset is you will see is quite comfortable. The, the, the problem will come from the wire. Once the wire, once the wire is up, the offset is very easy to go up with. This is a sack wire. Mm -hmm. There probably we need to give, give o, more curve. O, o curve the, so okay. I was trying to curve the guide wire to see if it's going to be easier to go through the deceased segment. Vale. Pero un segundo. Déjame subir el, el cap 5. Déjame ese. So probably we need to give more curve to the to the to the, to the yeah. wire simply. Okay, that, that's the here we've got the cut, the five. cut five. We approach to the working wow. area and now we take out the wire and we we'll give some more curve. Este pasándome la por detrás. Okay. Preparamos otra cinco para luego para trabajar con la con la no curvada. Cuando estemos arriba sobre el surface, okay? Okay. We... So we've changed the, the curve of the guide wire in order to be able to pass through there. I think when we speak, they will hear. Yeah. Baja un poco el cinco. When we speak, they will hear. Yeah, they will hear. Yeah, they will hear. Estén Uh, hello, Spain. Can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Uh, so, uh, just a question while you're going up is that uh, did you all do a test occlusion before uh, you must have done it during the uh, diagnostics? Uh, How was the cross? Could we please uh, put the volume uh, higher? Sube un poquito el catete. Why? Para que me dé soporte fuera de la rama. Sube, sube. Why? Va a ser jodido esto. Empujo un poquito. Hay que meterle un curvón y que te gire al revés. Así. así. Cuidado que se mete. Baja un poco el cadete. Pues se oye okay. muy flojito. We don't hear them, no. So... Just to tell everybody, in difficult crossings, when we want to cross the aneurysm, even we like, love to use synchro. You know, it has got a very yeah. good control. Oh, yeah. 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 Synchro helps us really, but we expect it to be <laughs> much more easily, but uh, as always. Yeah. We'll deliver that easily. Así es, Juan. Así voy. Igualmente se mete. Sí. Ahora casi lo tienes. Casi lo tienes. Casi lo tenía. We're trying to navigate uh, smoothly with the guide wire. Yeah, we can see it's uh, tricky there. Yeah. Even the camera's bond is pretty sharp, so I don't think. Uh, no, let us see. Ahí estás, no lo pierdas. Cuidado que estás en la corrida. Ahí vas, perfecto. Ok, so we're trying to manage. Cuidado que es la corrida. ¿Quieres que...? Espera, espera. Ahora ya lo tienes. Perfecto. Great. Ok, okay. so that's good. We're going to the branch that we wanted to go.
You will see how the we're going to see how it goes up normally cross easily the neck. Tú me dices, Let me see aquí the... Si Voy. Ahí vas bien. Okay. So we're going to have more stability with the guide wire here. Voy. Mm. And we're going to go up there with the offset to see how it behaves. And the behavior, as you could see, is very, very good. So we're going to yeah. go up here, and then we're going to go up with the CAT5 through the offset catheter. Bit upper. Yeah. So the, the advantage of the offset is that the step in between the, the caliber of the stent and the caliber of the CAT5 is, is very little, because in the middle part of the, uh, of the offset, the size of the catheter outside is bigger than the, in the distal and proximal part. Uh, there is no gap, so uh, it's supposed to be much easier to go with the CAT5 through so here. To, We're going to see bypass the, the neck of the anus is more easy with that system. Can you it all? Yeah, it's a little bit. Okay. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. So you see how the CAT5 Bypass yeah. easily yeah. the neck of yeah. the anus. That that's great. So uh, uh, can you listen? Yeah. Uh, what problems yeah. you can yeah. have while uh, putting this? For youngsters, you want to know. So we have got some senior neurosurgeons yeah. here. So they want to know yeah. what can be the problems in trying to do something like this. I mean. Yeah, because when we try to pass with a big uh, uh, catheter uh, over a little catheter outside, there is a big step in between, a gap, and this gap of the big anus uh, of the biggest catheter will be hidden the outside path of, of the of the aneurysm and that makes very very difficult to bypass the neck of the aneurysm uh, the transition between the micro catheter and the catheter we want to go up there should be as uh, as uh, as best as possible so, we will so in order for the transition the not to hit uh, the neck of the aneurysm for example and make so it difficult to pass through there so, so, so now we leave the, the cut five there, so we will do a direct and direct technique. Uh, if we take a long wire, we need to make an exchange because the, the system of the surpass is an over-the-wire system. And we don't like to use, if we can avoid, a long uh, wire there to make a change because you, you get more risk of perforation of the distal branches. All right. So now we take a short wire yeah. with, the, with, with the system of the stem that you will see now. And we're going to take a short run just to see that everything is fine there and to see if we have modified a little bit maybe the, the anatomy. So yeah, here and we go. Uh, and please show us the preparation Yeah, Everybody is very interested in yeah. how you prepare yeah. this test. Yeah. We're going to show yeah. it to you right now. So we do that. You see, we, we always uh, we clean the external part. We, we wet uh, all the system. Uh, can and we now, zoom and as focus? I told you, uh, 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 can the cameraman sorry? just focus on this stent? Yeah. 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 This is the stent system. You can see we zoom there? This part is the pusher. Mm -hmm. This part is the Y valve. And this is a, this is a simple catheter. And the stent is inside, in between, it is, it is uh, can, taken. Can we zoom the image a little bit here? Yeah. Great. So you see, this is a two-axial system. You get a pusher inside, an external catheter, and the stent is in here in the middle, La bomba. linked in between bomba the pusher posta? and the yeah. external catheter. When we, when we pull back the catheter, uh, the pusher stays in, in, uh, in place, uh, and the stent will open. The advantage of this system is that we will get control with uh, our own wire inside that is free completely okay. from the system. So, uh, in the standard way we used before, we used before at the beginning of, the, of the, our experience, we, we used to make an exchange that always takes time. All and right. it's difficult because it's, diff it's easy to perforate sometimes and this is the bigger risk. Now, we place the CAT5 uh, bypassing the neck of the aneurysm and we go with the system inside the CAT5. And even we use the CAT5, as you will see, for deliver the stent. We open the stent inside, and we deliver part of the stent at the beginning through the CAT5. So for cleaning, I need a three millimeter uh, uh, syringe. So will you be syringe, please. So how do you flush the catheter lumen? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I start yeah. You're uh, see it right now here. The, you see, I, I'm flushing the catheter lumen. Uh, first, uh, I, I flush the white valve. I'm going to have better. Uh, uh, this is not focused. Can you just, uh, yeah, Please? can they cover the yeah, whole? Yeah, we're trying, yeah. it's yeah. here, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right here. Yes. I'm, I'm cleaning first the Y valve. Secondly, I, I flush the inner part, the, the, the hypertrophy. And now with a little assurance, I will clean 
yeah. the inner part of the cathode or the stent. You see, so, I'm pinning it. And so even I, I will show you where the stent is. Can we yeah. zoom this a can, bit can more we, or not? Can we, we just focus on the stent there? Here. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying to here in my hand. Yeah. Yeah, you go, you go, you go, you go, you go, you go. No, no, not too much. You go. So you see, you get there. That's I'm, it. I'm, I'm pushing out the the pusher, and now you will see the stand. Now itself. you can see yeah, the stand yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah we now, can see it. Yeah. Uh, the stand is fixed to the pusher. Uh, you will see we get a proximal marker. Now there we. Now we're I flashing. Can, I, I can clearly flash the stand, and now I I replace the stand in that position. Uh, I okay. it there. It's yeah. a distal olive to help navigation, and now. So it's a pre-mounted <laughs> stand. Yeah, we got it. We place the wire inside. I still keep on. I place the wire inside this, the hypertrophy. So this wire is the the wire I choose myself. Okay, this is a synchro. The one we we use to for uh, bypass the the neck of the aneurysm. And there we will flash afterwards this. We don't flash in the inner part, we just leave the serans there, but we flash right. the, the wire to avoid any kind of... Uh, no, 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 moment flash. So we are just talking to the audience. So the surpass has their advantage that the wire is free. You know, Dr. Fair was talking in morning, yeah, the, the case was... The wire is completely free. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of the advantages so when you need to, to bypass long necks or long distance because you will, you will get always your wire on position. So you yeah, always cross the aneurysm with the CAT5 or sometimes you just keep if it I can, yeah. If I can, this is the, the best way because like this you right. avoid to use any kind of uh, distal uh, wire. Yeah, we okay. avoid the exchange wire which is always right. something that may be risky. Mm -hmm. So this is also potentially a disadvantage because you're crossing it with a very uh, large... Uh, uh, We're used right now to go with these kind of catheters as distal as that for a stroke, so it's not a big issue. I mean, we don't really need it, we want to avoid that. We use because we feel very comfortable so with, with the... So we're going to go inside right now. Now we are going inside with the with the guide wire and the device itself. Okay, we can go with the guide wire. But of course, uh, as they mentioned, it's a triaxial system, you know, which they are used. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So your long you sheet. You can see if we can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have a long sheet with this yes. the infinity. Mm -hmm. We have the cat five up there, we and the now we're going with the catheter. Uh, that after what with the pusher, at what with the wire. So it's <coughs> a five axial system actually in, on our hands. So your long sheet is in common carotid or is in the ICA? No, ICA. 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 Yeah. So usually yeah. you need that to support a cat five. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. So now we're going up here. You can see the guide wire inside the cat five. Okay. And now and you uh, will see. We'll see where we place the surpass, wire. which is mounted right yeah. here. At one stage, you'd like to see the fluoroscopy, so you can show us the markers and everything, so that would be nice. Yeah, I, yeah. Will, I will do that in yes, a moment. Yes, we will do it right now. Let us okay. place in a, in a good position, and, and we will show you all the markers. Uh, probably we need to pull back a little bit the CAT5 to go, okay. if we can, to the temporal branch. Okay. Uh, or if not, it doesn't matter. But okay. Yeah. So you can point that. Okay. We can try to go to the lower branch, if not, we can try to go to the lower branch. Eh? No, pero no perdamos la posición, no. Yeah, yeah. So we will go to the same branch that we were before. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, sorry, no, no, no. So now we place the wire in a good position, and now okay. you go up, we go up with the okay, boy, extend yeah. itself. We'll pull back a little bit the cat five when, we, when this goes. We should be carefully moving. Empuja todo. Todo? El CAT5 también, ¿quieres decir? Sin que no se te venga atrás. Vale. Vale. So you see, uh, we are navigating. Be careful, Jordi. Aguanta, me guía. Ok. No. No dejes venir a CAT5 atrás, uh -huh. ¿eh? Estoy empujando, ¿eh? Pero... Mm. Si quieres voy yo ahí. Va, ahora va, ya está. Ok. Now we are well placed there. We will... Un poco más. No dejes caerse, Edson. Déjame, déjame. Está perdiendo tensión ahí. <coughs> so you, we probably need to go up a little bit upper with the infinity to support better the system. Yeah, yes. Estás dando su frente, ¿eh, Juan? Mm -hmm. vale. <coughs> 
So infinity is uh, in good place okay. there. And now everything will be much more easy. We go up a little bit more with the cat five. No más sujetes nada, eh? And now over the cat five, I will go with the extent itself. Subimos el cat five más, okay. Mm -hmm. Aguanteme la guía. Okay. Controlame la guía, eh, que no se vaya allí. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Macho. So now, yes. Hi, how are you? It's to fail here. Yeah. Sorry? It's to fail from Leeds. Hi. 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 Macho, uh, are you planning to deploy it inside your CAT5 and then bring it back or are you going to take it off? Yeah, I will start to open inside the CAT5 and I will use the CAT5 as a secondary system to deploy it. You see, we get, I, I will, this is the moment, probably we, we can get all the. We will go over the lateral view to, to get all the markers in the... Sí, uh, you see? So, uh, I don't know how can, can I show you. You will see the distal... Uh, the transmission you will see the distal can part. Just, yeah, can just switch to the fluoroscopy view. Yeah. Or you can take a single shot only and show Only it fluoroscopy works. is not possible because you are seeing uh, the, the, the big screen we are working, but maybe okay. they can zoom there outside. Yeah, life. A or if yeah, you can take a single shot uh, image and, you know, that will show us yeah. the markers very photos. clearly. Yeah, yeah we well, good. We're yeah. going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there, are, uh, yeah. as now we get a lot of uh, things inside and uh, the, the one covers a little bit the others, but you see the distal part, the distal point is the distal part of the pusher. Yeah, Afterwards you get, eh, let me see. Que te quito la, they are trying to, to give us the uh, unsubstructed system. Okay. okay. So they are, the distal point is the distal part of the pusher. Afterwards you get the distal delivering catheter. And afterward the third one is the CAT5 is itself. And in the lateral view, you see very close to the, to the curve, distal curve, where we get the cat five. This is a, a, we, we should see there a little bit the stent itself, eh, that is inside. And the stent is all along that way, at, that ends in the proximal pusher. Eh, that, that, that's what we see in the, in the lower part inside the cat five. If I pull back the cat five, you will see better the stent itself, but I like to to keep it there. I, I, will, I will do it for you. Uh, can I get the, not that one, I, I want to, to get the, the, lat, the frontal and the lateral standard with six views. Ah, okay. Yeah. That one. Yeah. So there is a little, but you will see better probably. Yeah, if you get a big, big screen, you see. I will pull back a little bit the cut five for not, take me the white, please. The white is the more. <laughs> So I, I will pull back a little bit the CAT5 over the system, just for showing you. And there you see, uh, now if we take a picture, you will be able to see the distal stent. So you see, uh, you can be, see in the frontal view, the, just uh, one centimeter behind the, the distal part of the, of the pusher. Espera que les pongo... You see, uh, I like, uh, this is in the middle of a bone uh, mark, but is there, it's just uh, one centimeter behind of the distal pusher, and uh, still inside the, the catheter. We are a little bit more distal to the curve, this distal curve of the carotid. Oh. So now what uh, we will do, just we will to, zoom Just give it a second, just to uh, explain to the audience, can you see this faint line around the wire? So that's what the stent is within the yeah. outer catheter. So if we can have the native. So that, yeah. Uh, Kiro, not all, we will give more, uh, more uh, uh, amplify, okay, we we'll amplify there and in the lateral. Quítame el roadmap, por favor. We will amplify and we will redo the roadmap in lateral too, please. Please, sir. Okay, that's, that's okay. Now, we redo a roadmap, as I told you, in that particular position, I, I do prefer to use a real roadmap with a very low part, uh, of, a lot of... Uh, Physiological solo and a little bit of contrast to, okay. to see the Aposto. to see better the, what are we doing there. Ah. Okay, now there we are. Uh. Okay. okay. 
there we are. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we would like to open the stand, really, where the Cat5 is more or less now. Yeah? So I will, I will go up with the Cat5. It's very easy to go up with the Cat5 over the system of the stand. Yeah? You see, Cat5 navigates. And there I will start to open the stand a little bit. Uh, uh, can we somehow we see the, the uh, native images, the fluoroscopic images? It will be very useful for the people here yeah. to understand. Can we show the whole screen, please? Because yeah. we've got both yeah. the, the, the roadmap yeah. and the yeah, yeah. That's we, it. we want to yeah. see that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I'm, I simply pull back my. I keep my, my pusher inside. Mm -hmm. I, I start to pull back my catheter. And you see? Actually, that file is going up. We can In fact, we can just replace. have these two images, the fluoroscopic images on the whole screen, you know? And we can keep yeah, explaining I to them. Yes, I, yeah. I, well, I don't know if they can. They can, I yeah, think. You can have your roadmap, but yeah. we can just see the fluoroscopic images. It's easier to understand what's happening. I think they so can the, manage to do it. You cannot. They're telling me that they can't. Okay. So that's all right. So sometimes it's starting to open oh, the yeah. stand to all that problem. That's okay. Yeah, it's, it's hard at the beginning. There is starting to move. You see how the distal mark and the proximal mark of the pusher is, yeah. is already being separated. Yeah, the stand yeah, so is reaching the, is the part where we could so start to open, but so basically I will open more. Um, you are deploying it in the CAT5, right? So this is the CAT5 yeah, I'm deploying tip. inside the CAT5 to help and us. And that's the outer yeah. catheter, so that's I the inner pusher. So I get a very long system, so I can easily deploy a big part of the stand inside. Yeah, this is the stand opening up. So now I fix the stand. I will okay. pull it up to the place where I want to, to deploy. You see? So they've and already deployed that much? I pull back the whole system. And now they're pulling it back into the place where they want it to be. You can see it here. There's the Cat5 I mean, coming in. Bahara, That's the stand in the Cat5. So I, I will place the stand where I want to be deployed. And I start to unsheath with only the CAT5. Yeah? All right, and now they will withdraw the CAT5 to unsheath the stand, which was there so in now there. I'm starting to deliver the stand, you see? So that's yeah? the stand. Yeah. Now I will show you okay. bigger. So maybe you can just uh, take a, another single shot and show it on the whole screen. Yeah. So, you know, yes. we can explain. This is that what yeah. we will do. Done. Just put one up on the end there, Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and show it just as a single two yeah. images there. Yeah. Wait, wait a second, Great. please, and I'm gonna try to find it. Terrific. This is good. So we can see this is the stand already released. Here. That's can the you pusher. See yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the cat five. So tip. I deliver a big part of the stand. If you can see, mm. we get in the lateral view a big, a little point behind the, the distal part of the delivery catheter, that is the uh, yeah. non-return area. So mm -hmm. probably we go to, to, it's a very long system, so I, I leave it to uh, go back. But we could, uh, when we work, the, when we work with short uh, stents, we don't have the right to do as much delivery inside the CAT5 as we, we, we are seeing now, because the distance in between the proximal pusher and the non-returnal mark, that is a, a kind of uh, hook, that takes the stand so is always fixed. The longer, the, the more distance we get to, to work, the shorter the stand. For instance, the 3 by 15 is the, the one that gets only a little bit more than half of the stand to, to be delivered before it's detached from the, from the push. Yes, yes. So but normally you are able to manage all that. So yeah. why did you decide to release a part of the stand in the CAT5? Uh, you know, I mean... Because as you will see, when, once we are working with the CAT5, it's much more easy to open it, uh, to work, okay. and even sometimes when you, are, you get difficult to open in the place where you are because of the curves, you can open lower in, inside the CAT5 and go up with the stem partially open. That is much more easy to, now, to open right. afterwards. You will see now. No. So now, what we will do... Uh, uh, sorry. We're going to repeat we do. ¿Quieres la otra configuración? Right? Sí. We go to the other configuration and then try to get a very low contrast uh, roadmap again. Okay. So there we are. Yeah. We are seeing that the stent 
is placed where we want it, hmm? more or less. Yeah? We are seeing there. I will recover a little bit with my pusher to be able to deploy it currently there because I don't like how it is. So uh, just to uh, explain to the audience, that's a Cat5 tip being withdrawn and that's a stent coming out of yeah. the Cat5. Yeah. And I that's like the pusher. A little bit and the wire is free. The lateral you know. view. So that we go to the big lateral view, like this we will see all the... Yeah, that will be nice. ¿Quieres así? Okay, ¿Pero quieres see? hacerla también o no? Ok, that should be. Probably we need to move a little bit lateral to not, don't get the dish. Okay. So if you can just... Get get right. Turn a little bit in the, in the, lat in the lateral. Dame. Uh, or we'll maybe... See if we are able to take out from the... Yeah. That's you great. see better the stand there, we saw better the stand, you see? This is the stand, the stand is, is well placed, is in the place where we would like to place it, as you, see, you were seeing in the, <laughs> as we planned. Yeah. <laughs> and now we take a road. Again. So if you can see the whole screen, we, we have the big image with the lateral view and we've yeah. got the small images with the AP view. Huh? Yeah, that's terrific, the lateral big image was very good. Yeah, this okay. is very nice, this will work for us. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to so keep now on going. We leave it clean and we keep on going. We just push the stand to be open better. You can put a little bit still to be better positioned there. You see how it reacts very easily the cut five to help us to go up. And I will receive a little bit the stand itself to help me to push it better in that part, the distal part. I open too much, you see, but I, I'm able to receive yeah. the stand. Now we're receiving it. And like this, my control over the deployment will be much better. So that's the stand catheter being pushed in to retrieve the stand partially. Yeah. And now again, the cat yeah. 5 is being withdrawn. Yeah. I'm fixing, be careful with the wire. Will be. I'm fixing the, th the, th the thing there, and then now we start to unsheath. Please me unsheath <coughs> there. The cat 5. I use cat 5 and, and the stand system itself for pushing the stand. You see how I'm working. You see the stand is already open in the distal part. If we like where it, where it is placed, I think it's okay. Eh? I like it where it is. And now I take out a little bit my, my CAT5. I push the whole system and I start to open in the curve. You will see how easy it is to open normally in the curve. There. You see how pushing the system is open by itself. I close and I simply push to open in the curve. It's opening very well there at the curve. You see, that curve is, is... I will take a picture to show you how it's open. You see, it's well adapted in the distal part, being open in the curve, so I keep on just pushing everything to... Now we're arriving right now to the neck of the biggest aneurysm. So now I simply push my system up to help the stent to open better. You see how it's open, being open there? Just by pushing the system, yeah, now, yeah. The longitude is now you will tell me, uh, be careful in that curve, no, with surpass, normally the curves are not the problem <laughs> at all. Yeah, we keep on pushing. So as you see, they're just pushing the stent out and that leads to the opening of the flow diverter. That's the usually way it works. Yeah. So now. And this, this is the beauty of surpass, isn't it? You, you, it opens more reliably than pipeline where you got to keep massaging, pushing, pulling. Whereas surpass, once it starts opening, you often see a much more reliable opening of the surpass. That's been my experience. Has that been your experience? Now simply pull back the system to open. Yeah, it doesn't get twisted easily. Sorry. So you see we are yeah. adapting with the CAT5 to so they've deployed. The to be completely open. Yeah, to open and properly there. That's, you will yeah. see that it's completely open. And the CAT5 has been taken inside to sort of massage it and becomes fully yeah. open. Yeah. Not yeah, that's it. very well. well. There we are. Eh? We are a little bit, uh, I would like to, I had, would like to be a little bit upper in the proximal part, but it's, as I told you, eh, it's difficult to calculate this sort, but you see the the length of the final stent, uh, the nominal is, is four, is make for a four millimeter vessel to be four, four centimeters. Here is a, it's never as big as, uh, as, as four in, in the proximal part is close to four, but not uh, even over than four. And even like this, the length is quite 
uh, close to the to the nominal length. And in the AP view, you can see how it uh, yeah. behaved very well and applied very well to the vessel wall, yes. approximately. So now we simply pull back, uh, take out the, the roadmap. We don't need any more. You see, the so wire simply, was free, and they could control it at any moment. You know, yeah. So yeah. Even if we we will get any problem, we could leave the wire there and pull the other part of the system up. But uh, I feel it's, it's okay. You see how in proximal part. So I will I will grow up with my. Sí. So I'm getting up with the catheter of the system. I, I want to go inside and see if everything is as good as so I want. The stand delivery micro catheter is being taken up. That's a pusher. That's a cat yeah. five. And now yeah. I'm going with the cat five. And then in, the lat the in the AP view, we get the lateral view. We can get the impression that we are over the curve, but I don't feel so. No, I know. So we, we yeah. In the AP view, it looks great. Huh? So you see, we are not in the curve at all. Eh? We are upper, just uh, where we should be uh, stopped. And uh, yeah. I feel that uh, we simply leave the, the wire inside. We fix all the system. We pull back. The stent system, even the wire, take out the, yeah. and we control it. We need to go to the go up. Vale. Mm -hmm. saca, saca sí. No deja la guía, saca esto. Ah, okay. Okay. So now we will take the stent system. We leave the cat yeah. five close to that area, and we leave the wire just in case we will need to replace another stent. In case that we don't, we will we wouldn't be no, happy no, with the no, place no, no, on proximal no, no. distal. No, no, hasta donde puedas. Okay, okay. Y, y, we could uh, even through the, the pusher deploy an atlas. Eh? It's a 016 hypertooth. All right. So the atlas passed through, and we could, uh, in, the, in the coming back, to deploy an atlas in the way back. But no, I don't think it's the case. Everything okay. is perfect. So uh, f first profile. Uh, yeah. Without your name. We'll simply do an a okay. injection here to be sure that everything okay. is OK. Um, before pulling back the wire. Okay. And you see, just a stent, very, not really easy, but quite practical to do. Uh, frente y perfil, por favor. Pero tienes, eh? So. ¿Qué quieres? Frente y perfil tienes aquí, ¿qué quieres? Sí. Sorry, I would place, uh, ir a, a, la serie pre, a la serie siguiente, poner el frente y perfil que pusimos. ¿Cómo me ayudas? ¿O? Ah, la working projection, no. ¿quieres decir? Okay. No, no, I ah, want to be to the oh, okay, AP okay. view to be sure okay. that everything is okay before. Okay. So, pon eso abajo y ahora, por favor. So, we're going to just check that everything is fine. Ponemos un, un automap. En fast, en fast, en fast, en fast. En fast. Ok, no. Espera, ok. As you see, it's more difficult to make the distal controls than to place the stent. <laughs> <laughs> So now we want to redo the, the same the, uh, roadmap out. I don't want to disturb Macho. Macho, can I, while you're doing that, Sorry. is it a good time to ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now we are just doing the, the controls. Uh, everything is finished here. Yeah. yeah, it's... it's so, you know, if you have a... One of the things I was always taught on surpass, and sometimes I've done is, if you are looking and you have a difficult to track, you know, you could mm -hmm. potentially use... A, you know, a three millimeter surpass will easily open in a four millimeter artery. Similarly, yeah. if the artery is big and you don't want to put up a five millimeter because it's very difficult to push a five millimeter surpass, four millimeter I will do the job. I agree with you. Do you agree or? In that, in that particular case, out of the length I need, uh, if I would have a three by, by four, I would do a three here. So if but you the have a... Is that the, the longer three is three, 25 was not enough in that length. So I'm... But I, for sure, so is that correct? Like, you know, a, f yeah. a three millimeter surpass is made on a four millimeter platform. So you could potentially yeah. use a three millimeter surpass and it will go up to four you know, very easily on a four mm -hmm. artery, right? For sure. So it's easy to open and much more easy to really adapt to the, to the uh, asymmetries of, of calibers in the distance. So now everything you see was okay. We take everything out and we leave just the cut five in the internal carotid and we redo the final controls, eh, with, uh, we do even a, a CT for scene, new control. Interesting, no? yeah. So the, the, the reason, at the beginning we were using, we, we were pushed 
by the ALD, idea that uh, 45 uh, wires was the best for every patient because you cover the most and especially, uh, so we try to place five millimeter stents in uh, four, even three and a half uh, uh, vessels. And that was too much stiff at the, at the end and we get some problems. So, sorry. <laughs> so finally, uh, we were, with the experience, we, 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 we learned that the best uh, uh, approach with surpass is to undersheath. So that means that when you get a four millimeter vessel in the proximal part, you, should, you shouldn't take a, a four, but a three, because this study you will be in a very good uh, way of opening. Here is the, uh, is the same for, so actually we are not using any more five in the arterial circulation, we just use four and three. Four, if we really need very, very length, like, like, to, like today, or if the proximal area is bigger than four. But if not, we, in the siphon, we are using mostly three millimeters. So the problem for not using here a three millimeter was that the, the size is too short for this mm -hmm. uh, segment of artery that we wanted to yeah. we throw over. The, the longer three we get is 25, and in that particular vessel that was in between three and four, yeah. it would be a little bit shortened. So we will not be covering as we wanted. So if I understand uh, what you're I, saying, mm -hmm. Macho, is if you can use a three, and you got a 3.75 artery or 3.8 or a 4, go for a 3, mm -hmm. if you can do with okay. the length. This is the reason. Right. And you will be a little bit for, for short term, but not that much. Okay. I mean, the, the question is that we will be going out of the room for the, for the 3D, and afterward we'll, we'll try to a, 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 city, a city over the room. To get, uh, okay. And Macho, can I ask you another question? Tell me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and, and with surpass, distally, you get a lot of foreshot, you get that uh, fish mouthing. Do you always uh, angioplasty or you don't angioplasty? I don't angioplasty. I actually were using an atlas distally yeah. because the, the, the uh, mouth fishing you are getting there is because you are oversizing. Or and the second reason is that you are entering in a curve. And if the you distal part, the, the, if you analyze the anatomy in, in the 3D, always the the, the anterior colloidal area is curved. Even if we saw it straight in the lateral, uh, it's not really uh, straight. And there, sometimes you get uh, this kind of mouth fishing because of the curve uh, that the anatomy forced to do to the stent. And the stent is, is harder than the vessel, and it makes this kind of, uh, of hyperplasia distally in, in the oh, control. Eh? Now we are seeing that placing simply a, an atlas that, as I told you, we can easily place through the pusher. We are able to make that transition in between the stiffness of the, of the surpass and the softness of the vessel more progressive and the, the, the long-term uh, results are much better. So what we do now, if we get a, a distal problem, whatever, we don't like how it's completely open, it's not completely well a position, we don't, we don't, we don't do any more uh, a ballooning, but uh, we use a, a stent. So you, do you use Atlas or do you use Aclino? Whatever, whatever you want, but we are using Atlas because, or Aclino, because are the only ones that actually we are checked uh, through the pusher. And, and it works in more than 90% of the cases. The only reason for not being able to deploy through the pusher is when you hit uh, partially the distal part of the pusher that is thinner because it's where the stent is land. Okay. And there are sometimes, if it's very tricky, the, the deployment, you right. can get a, a, a little bend that will not allow to the stent to pass. But the, the inner lumen of the of the pusher, of, the, of, of this uh, ipo tube that is the pusher, is the same than the SL10. We're going to take a final 16, run. So Nine, three? The, the Atlas passed perfectly, no, no, not only one problem. Uh, I don't know, we, we, are, we will see now the, the, the final control with the CT, but I feel that so uh, everything has been perfect. And uh, as you see, just one uh, uh, simple stent uh, covers uh, a, a l very long uh, part of the carotid no, no, uh, and the, so the, the, the prediction of the length of the stent is much more easy with surpass with, with that with what, whatever other stent just because the, the particular construction that where the cell is uh, inverse to the other ones. In the other ones, once you oversize a little bit, you will be really f for certain, but not with the stent. So with we're going to take a final run. That, that allows us to be much view. more uh, 
but accurate in the in the prediction of the length and everything. Any other questions? Uh, post okay. or pre uh, post tenting, do you like to do a Dynacity or a 3D? I mean, what's the choice? We 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 do prefer a Dynacity. Eh? Is that we are we are going to do now? Eh? Okay. We just wanted to do the, the 3D to understand better the anatomy, how it has been changed. All Actually, right. we, are, we are using Dynacity because we are working on a, a okay. software to predict the length, um, um, not only the length, but the, even the, the porosity of the stent. We are sure. working, working on that. I hope that okay. in the next month we can offer you something in that, in that way. We could, uh, uh, based on a, on a software, predict uh, how the the, the, the wires are placed and uh, which is the, the okay. real porosity of that stents. So I think the looks, angiogram looks good. I think it is yeah. Uh, yeah. all went very I'm going to well. try to zoom it and, and to show the final okay. run here. here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry? No, it's all right. So yeah, uh, uh, you are you working on the Dynacity now? No, we're going to have the final run, and yeah. if you we want, we can perform a Dynacity. Final run in, and fi and, uh, just after, we'll do the Dynacity. Okay. Uh, uh, any other question, any other comment, bomba. please? Okay, so this is going to be the final uh, run with Zoom, and now then we'll do the, the uh, we're going to perform a Dynacity. We try to do through the, through the uh, infinity with the Cal5 inside, and the... the, the any question nice from enough. the audience? Any, anybody wants to yeah. ask something? I think they're almost done. You see the effect o over the, yeah. the aneurysm is, is quite You can see a stagnation here. One, two, three, in three all of them. them. Retaining the, the contrast of the insulin. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. In our experience, when we okay. control this aneurysm in one month for whatever the, uh, other case, 80% of them were already closed in one month. Eh? And oh, wow. And how Sometimes long uh, okay. will you give antiplatelets here? I mean, what are the drugs uh, you are we, using? We use the standard, uh, the standard <laughs> concept. I mean, we, we keep sure. uh, at least three months with double antiplatelet uh, therapy. And uh, after three months, we perform our uh, angio, angio CT sometimes in the room by the, the vein, venous access or MRI or whatever image that uh, give us a good... Uh, impression that there is no problem with the stent and in that case we, we live at least one year with uh, one anti therapy. Uh, right. We actually are doing the, the final control at one year and if everything is okay in the vessel we stop uh, even, uh, All right. That's uh, good. even that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that looks very good. Okay, that's that looks very good. I hope you can see how everybody is appreciating it and uh, I think very nicely, it was a, not a usual case and a little tricky mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I think the demonstration went very well, we were able to see everything, whatever you were teaching pretty well and uh, from mm -hmm. Delhi Thank we you. highly appreciate it and thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Next time I hope to be there. Yes, <laughs> yes. <Thank> you. <laughs> no, we are working, it's much better always to be on the other side. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that's what we appreciate. It's not so easy to, you know, transmit. But uh, we thank no, you I a lot for that. You have yeah. a very, very tough work there. And congratulations right. for the Congress. Uh, yeah. It's a very, very uh, yes. interesting one. So uh, and, uh, we'll be probably be going offline now, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right. You want? We can try to send you some uh, pictures of the Dynacity once uh, yeah. it's finished. But uh, it yeah, yeah, uh, we'd love to see those. In between preparing everything yes. because we, we need sure. to dilute quite a lot the contrast and prepare right. the pump for, okay. just for it. Thank yeah. you to the okay. audience and congratulations. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.